we need to make sure we're checking in with ourselves. So why not? What color you are, what age you are, what gender you are. So if you change that thought, you can change your belief. You have to be able to look at yourself and be aware of your actions, your statements, your thoughts, your belief, the whole thing. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a simple book review of one of my favorite authors, Gabrielle Bernstein, called Super Attractor. If you have not read this book, you need to go out and read it. Go to Audible or go to Barnes and Nobles, order it off Amazon, whatever your heart's desire. Again, with my book reviews, I'm just gonna go over my bullet point notes and the topics that she discusses because I don't wanna go into too much detail because I want people to support these authors. So we're just gonna get right into it. Okay, so chapter one discusses quite a bit she starts off pretty heavy, which I love. She mainly talks about how energy is all around us and that each thought we have into the world will admit energy. And she also talks about fear and control and you have to forgive your fear and release the control. One of the quotes, I forgive my past, I release my future, and I honor how I feel in the present. I love that one. That quote is definitely one that stuck with me throughout this whole book. Because she talks about how discomfort is supposed to tell you and reveal what you need to heal from. And then she gives you a three-step method to follow to make sure you heal from whatever you think or whatever you feel you need to heal from. And it may be something you didn't know that you needed to heal from. We all have pretty busy lives now, especially with what's going on in the world. And we need to make sure we're checking in with ourselves. So why not? So let's go over that process. Step one. Notice your thought and how does it make you feel? She said it's best to go over this with pen and paper and write everything down. That way you can see it in front of you and it'll process better. Step two, forgive the thought and thank your negative thoughts for showing what you don't want. And step three is choose again choose your positive thoughts again and thank yourself for showing yourself thank yourself for showing yourself the positive thoughts so basically choose to be positive and she also states no one is immune to negative thoughts no matter where in the world you are so it doesn't matter what color you are what age you are what gender you are you can always choose to be positive. You don't have to give in to negative thoughts. And yes, that kind of sounds self-explanatory, kind of obvious, but sometimes you need to state the obvious and remind people, choose to be positive. Another one of my favorite quotes is by Abraham Hicks. A belief is just a thought you keep thinking. Mm. That's definitely talking to all the people who believe in things because they think it. But what if somebody told you, hey, a belief is just a thought you keep thinking. So if you change that thought, you can change your belief. Pew! Amazing, right? It'd be the simple things. Okay, then she talks about how you need to rely on the higher power to take the lead. Even if you don't believe in God, she talks a lot about it. She does believe in God, but she also believes in the universe and in guardian angels. She basically tells you you need to realize that 
you need to realize, but you should realize that there is a higher power out there beyond our control. And she says, it doesn't matter if you pick God or Buddha or whoever you choose to believe in, but in the simple fact, you need to believe there's something bigger out there. Let's get back on track. <laughs> um, and so after that, she talks about having a positive energy in the morning is very important and how you should go through affirmations and pick out a few to tell yourself in the morning to start your day off on that positive note. Because when you start off positive, your subconscious mind is going to look for all those positive things throughout the day. Subconscious mind or unconscious mind? Dr. Daniel Amen says both, so I'm not really sure what's appropriate or correct. And the example she gives for the affirmation is I take action with faith and clarity. And she said you can use her examples. She gives a lot more throughout the book, which is why you need to read it or listen to it if you prefer audible. And that's how she ends on chapter one. So we're going to start chapter two. So chapter two is about fear and how we resist to feel good like we are addicted to fear. It's a weird concept, but the way she breaks it down makes a lot of sense, I'm just saying. And how we need to learn how we should accept that good things can come to us easily. A quote by Deepak Chopra. I hope I'm not butchering that. I forget how to say his name every single time. I will link his Instagram account below. He is amazing. If you're not following him on Instagram, you should do so. And he says, when you are happy for a particular reason, you're still in misery because that reason could be taken from you tomorrow. I feel like I used to struggle with this. I would rely on other people for my happiness until I realized I don't need people to be happy and I can choose to be happy myself. It's a great concept, isn't it? Again, simple concept. But a lot of people just can't figure it out. Maybe someone has forgotten and they need to be reminded. You never know. Okay, and from there she goes on to a think it to feel it method. You use a moment where you felt happy and apply it to an area where you are not happy. Which sounds like a really good method. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to and that it's okay to reminisce and think about past experiences or to look to others so we can feel good and stay good. So having good people around you to influence positive behavior would be good. So, so then she goes into how to control your perception, the way you view things, the way you look at things. And she goes over how to access that good feeling so that you can do so. So then she goes into when you start practicing that and you start pulling up that good feelings and the positive energy, you can make that a habit. And when you make it a habit, when things don't go as planned, because you're in habit, you can still have those good feelings. Then she talks about don't fear your fear. Don't be afraid of your fear and forget what you think you need and focus on what feels good. <laughs> this palette has lasted through some stuff. Just gonna say. Chapter three, she talks a lot about we fear not having enough or being enough and how we compare too much because we think everything is a competition. And I bet social media doesn't help out with that. And she talks a lot about comparison equals judgment and judgment equals low vibrations. And then she goes over the seven blocks that block us from our super attractor power. Hence the name of the book, Super Attractor. Number one is believing in lack. Number two is there is not enough to go around. Number three is comparison to one another. Four 
needs to win at the expense of having fun, five, fear of rejection, six, having a need more mentality, and number seven, fear of being judged. And then after that, she talks about the universal abundance method. So you will protect your desires to stay in alignment, focus on giving rather than getting, want more for others, do something or anything that feels good to you, and healing. And chapter four. Okay, so you have to identify whether you are low or high and slowly move towards the energy that you want. If there's something you want, then go after it. But in order to go after it, you need to make sure you have the right vibrations. And then she goes over the emotional scale, which ranges from joy, appreciation, love, passion, pot being positive or belief, hopefulness, boredom, frustration, disappointment, doubt, worry, blame, anger, revenge, insecurity. And the last one is fear. And I didn't go over all of them. She has 22 that she listed and I didn't go over all of them. So you can only imagine the other ones. And she mentions Abraham Hicks a lot throughout this. So distraction is the fastest way to alignment. And they go into detail about that. And you have to honor and acknowledge your feelings and find joy in situations and find the joy in situations. And most people think joy comes from achievement and it's actually the other way around. Achievement comes from joy. And the more fun you have, the more joy you will experience. It says, try measuring your success by how much fun you're having. That one is my top number one. That one is my favorite. One of Gabby's quotes is, People who are truly happy are truly helpful. As so sweet. Um, and I'm gonna do my lip off camera because I can't talk and do my lips at the same time. Be right back. And the next few chapters aren't as long so I don't have as much bullet points, but chapter five, she talks about the spiritual realm and seeing with light having light episodes and she goes into detail about that and I will leave you hanging on that because that is a good topic she talks about. Chapter 6 is all about spiritual guides lead us to love and our guides meet us where we are. I like that one. I think that's the one where she has a story. Oh, I can't remember the story. Might have to leave you hanging on that one too. Next is chapter 7. And she talks about us not relying on just our strengths and how you can't rely on only your strength and you have to let go and allow the higher power to lead you. She also talks about praying for guidance. Chapter 8, she talks about how we need to merge our desires with our faith. And then she gives you four steps to spiritually align yourself. Step number one, Make sure your desire is backed by service and inspiration. Number two, believe the universe will have your back. Number three, take action from spiritually aligned actions. And number four, have patience, which that's the one I need to work on. Chapter nine, appreciate it all. You have to learn to appreciate the good, the bad, the ugly, the nice, the not so nice. She talks about just be appreciative of everything and that you have to make it all a habit. And then she says, try journaling about it. And that fear can be like our energetic sabotage. I love, love, love how she words that. It's genius, it makes a lot of sense. And even try meditating on it. The feeling of appreciation can go really far. It could go really far. There will be a lot of her books on this channel, just a heads up, by the way. All right, next is chapter 10. And in chapter 10, she goes over, you need to have faith no matter what. Again, same thing with looking at everything and appreciating everything with the good, the bad, no matter what it is. 
always have faith. Surrender your plans and desires and your agenda to the higher power and the universe. And she really goes heavily on spirits and her guided angels. She says, spirits talk through guides and angels to nurture us. So to help us out and lead us. And the last chapter, chapter 11, is you might be afraid to feel good. She was like, don't do that. Don't be afraid to feel good. Learn to embrace it. Just follow the three-step choose again method, which again was from the beginning. Your fear isn't your truth. Gratitude is for lessons because we are entitled for miracles. We deserve miracles. We deserve positive energy. I'm going to say it again. We deserve miracles. We deserve positivity. And be conscious of your own energy. You have to be able to look at yourself and be aware of your actions, your statements, your thoughts, your belief, the whole thing. You have to learn to be aware of it because if you're not aware, you could consistently make bad choices, have negativity, and you're never aware of it because you're not asking yourself, you're not looking within. I can go on for hours, okay? Don't get me started. This book is amazing. All the books I review are amazing. Let's let's just start with that. And let's go back to the choose again method. Step one, notice the thought and how does it make you feel? Step two, forgive the thought and thank your negative thoughts for showing you what you don't want. Three, choose again towards those positive thoughts and thank yourself for showing yourself. And again, that was Gabby Bernstein, Super Attractor. That's a short book, but it's a really good read. I have it on my Audible, which is why I don't have the book to hold up like my last review. Definitely go get it. Go get it on Audible or buy it on Amazon, wherever you want. And I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next week. <clears throat> We're going to be doing this all day. Oh my gosh, my voice. <sighs> Note to future self, do not sing karaoke the night before you fail. It's that simple. Fear. Uh, uh, fear of not having enough or being enough. So she links chapter one and chapter two with how we feel oh, what am I trying to say I feel like being extra today can't wait oh see look already singing you already did so much of that last night anyways or they might have forgotten <laughs> what I put on way too much blush <laughs> well let's blend that out we're gonna go up a little higher into this area this is cute. This is cute. Okay. I just love this palette. It's absolutely amazing. Oh, you hear my stomach. This red is leaking out everywhere. Smudging. <laughs> this red is smudging out everywhere. Look at that. It's okay though. We'll take it off after this video. Don't mind if I get red crusties on my teeth. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Why does it look pinky red on camera? Ooh, honey, honey. Got a bold lip today.